you want to turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4, that's where we're going to spend the bulk of our time this evening. Oh, I had notes somewhere. That's good. Proverbs chapter 4. I want to share with you an experience that I had in 2007. I graduated college in 2006. Uh, very excited at 21 years old to get out into the workforce. I began uh, my full-time work. And in 2007, in June of that summer, uh, 22 years old, I was able to go on my very first foreign mission trip. I got to go to the, the country of Jamaica and had a fantastic two-week adventure in Jamaica. And if you go to my Facebook profile, I know some of you guys don't use Facebook now, but if you go to my Facebook profile, you can see some, some images from that trip. And I think I called it my Jamaican holiday or something like that. And there's a couple albums, but you can go see uh, some of those things. But one of the most uh, memorable things that I have from that trip was an evening where my, one of my best friends, he's probably my best friend, and I are sitting on beds on opposite sides of this bungalow right on the beach and there's no glass in the windows and the, the ocean breeze is blowing through the top of the bungalow and you just hear it crashing against the ocean and, and I, I sent him a text tonight and told him I was going to talk about this and, and I said, man, send me back and he said, I'm ready to go right now. It was beautiful, um, full, uh, a, a group of beautiful Christians and uh, we spend a lot of time in that little, that little bungalow, you know, studying at night, preparing for the next day's evangelistic efforts. Um, our friend even had to sleep on the floor between our beds. And so the three of us guys hanging out every single night, talking about girls, dreaming about holy things and, and getting ready for the next day. And, and I just, I felt motivated to read in Proverbs, and I thought, well, I'm here for two weeks. I'm going to read the book of Proverbs. And I got to chapter four, you know, second, first day, second day, something like that. And, and I read through, and I thought, man, this is, this is great stuff. And so I want to read with you some of chapter four of the book of Proverbs. Remember, this is Solomon writing with regard to uh, his children. But see the words that he writes in, in chapter four. It says, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend unto understanding attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, fors forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender, and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said to me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor, and when thou dost embrace her, she shall give thee, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, for the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom, I have led thee the right, in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened or constrained, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. You know, Solomon being the wisest man to ever live uh, on this earth, says take wisdom and take understanding and get it from your parents. And I thought, you know, that's, that's great advice. And, I, and I'll interchange here his, his comments of father and mother with with our peers, take wisdom, learn from others' examples, and these kind of things. And he continues on in verse number 14 down through verse 22, and he talks about, you know, staying away from evil things and uh, abstaining from evil things. And as you go down through verse 23, I want to pick up in verse 23 again. It says here, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thy eyelids not look straight before thee. Ponder the paths of thy feet, and let thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. 
I remember reading this and it, it caught me a little off guard when I read the last couple words of this verse, remove thy foot from evil. And it made me chuckle, you know, as a, as a uh, 22 year old man here in the country of Jamaica doing this, this work. And, and I thought, well, that's a fun phrase to say. And we started, you know, because he's my best friend and it was the three of us in this bungalow, we started saying this quite regularly throughout our two-week adventure in Jamaica, randomly at times you would, you'd hear one of us shout, and I mean shout from across the, the neighborhood, remove thy foot from evil. And uh, it became quite a, you know, some, some phrase of reminders. And, and I thought to myself, you know, as, as we kept saying it over and over again, it starts to stick home a little bit more. Remove thy foot from evil. Listen to the advice of others. Remove your foot from evil. Don't walk the ways of the wicked. Don't go down the paths that are wrong. Remove thy foot from evil. He says, you keep your eyes fixed straight forward on the Lord. You keep your path straight and remove your foot from evil. It's like, wow, that's, that's kind of, you know, it became a, a profound thing. And so, you know, I'm 38 years old. That was 16 years ago that I, that I took this trip to Jamaica and, and got to go and spread the gospel. And, it, and it's still a phrase that has meaning to me today. Re- remove thy foot from evil. You know, you think, why, why do we stick our foot in evil to begin with? Well, James tells us that we're drawn away by our own lust and enticed. That we are, that we are it's, it's our own fault that we stick our foot in evil. And so this man of great wisdom, the wisdom that he offers to his son, he says, you take note of what you've learned of me Get your foot out of evil. You know, and as I'm growing up now, it even means more than it did there at 22, screaming it at the top of my lungs. You know, I'm afraid we may have scared off a few Jamaicans while we were in their neighborhoods, but I text him tonight, and, and he was like, man, I remember that. You know, an encouraging thing. There's lots of phrases that we have that we share back and forth from our growing up years, our impressionable years. But I wanted to share this one with you tonight and encourage you. Remove your foot from evil. Don't, don't walk out of here tonight and walk straight into evil, but remove your foot. I hope that you'll take time and read through Proverbs and see the wisdom that Solomon has to offer a child of God. And the simple admonition Remove your foot from evil. Consider your paths. Consider the ways that you go. I want to encourage you tonight that if your foot is stuck in the middle of evil, it's not the end of the world. You need to get your foot out of evil. If you are caught up in a a web of evil, if you have not kept your eyes fixed straight, if you have not considered the path of your feet, Fix it tonight. Remove your foot from evil this evening. Take that first step away from evil towards God tonight. You can become a Christian if that be your need. You can make things right, repent of sins in your life. You can ask for help to keep your foot out of evil. I pray that you will remember this. Chapter 4, verse 27, remove thy foot from evil. If we can help you tonight, please come forward while we stand and sing.